Hi everybody, Mr. Kleiman here. I've got two helpers with me. Who are you? Nizzy! And who are you? Panda! Nizzy. This is an atom. Atom. And this is the nucleus. Okay. Hey Brenda, what's in the nucleus? Protons. <laughs> Hey, Lizzie, what else is in there? Neutrons. One, two, three, four, five, six. Keep them in that <laughs> nucleus, kid. <laughs> As you know, the protons and neutrons do not move. They are locked in the nucleus. But the electrons can be gained to get a full outer shell. Or they can lose electrons to get a full outer shell. Since electrons can be gained or lost from objects, how do we do it? Sometimes just by rubbing. And now the electrons have gone from my hair into the balloon. Oh. So I'm giving this ebonite rod a negative charge by rubbing it against fur. Ready to go. Ready. I'm going to give this rod the same charge as the other one. When we bring two negatively charged rods together, watch what happens. Go ahead, Lizzie. Whoa, they're repelling. But if I bring a rod nearby that has an opposite charge, check out what happens there. Hey, it's attracted to that rod. Oh. They're attracted to each other. Whoa. Nice work, Brenda. Thanks, girls. So rubbing different objects together is going to give them different charges. Some objects are going to gain electrons and others are going to lose. Hey girls, how do you know which way the electrons go? I don't know. When I charge this ebonite rod with this piece of fur, I can predict which way the electrons will go using a tool called the electrostatic series, sometimes called the triboelectric series. Ebonite is right at the bottom of the uh, triboelectric series, which means that it has the strongest pull for electrons. Fur is higher on the electrostatic series. That means it has a weaker hold on its electrons. So when I rub ebonite against fur, electrons will go from the fur into the ebonite. Higher on the electrostatic series, weaker pull tends to become positive. Lower on the electrostatic series, stronger pull for electrons, it tends to become negative. What happens when I rub it against a glass rod? Well, glass is higher on the electrostatic series than fur, meaning that now electrons are going to go from the glass into the fur. Positive charge, negative charge. So you remember that thing we were playing with a minute ago? That was spinning on the floor? No? Lizzie, can you bring in the thing? What? This? Yeah. Put it right here. Oh yeah, this thing. We were able to use this device to detect the presence of a charge. When we charged the end of this rod and brought another charged object nearby, it started to spin. This is what we call an electroscope a tool used to detect the presence of static electric charge. But we don't want this one. Brenda, bring in the electroscope. I come up. I go Put it on the table, please. Ta-da! The electroscope has two main parts. The sphere and that's where we can bring charged objects nearby the electroscope and inside we've got the leaves. One of them can move and one of them can't. So now I'm going to charge this ebonite rod with fur to give it a negative charge. Let's see if we can detect the presence of that negative charge. 
When I bring it near the sphere of the electroscope, you can see the leaves reacting. That's because the electrons from the sphere are being repelled by the negatively charged rod deep down into the leaves. You can see that when I take the rod away, the electroscope goes back to normal. We call that an induced charge separation, and it's only temporary. If we want the charge to stay, we need to get electrons to go from the rod into the electroscope and stay there for good. We can do that by charging by contact. As soon as I touch the electroscope, electrons are transferred from the rod into the electroscope permanently. And now you can see the electroscope holds its charge. How do I get them out of there? Lizzie, can you get those, those electrons out from the electroscope for me, please? No? Brenda? <coughs> Just by touching the electroscope, she's grounded it, which means that the extra electrons that we put inside the electroscope can come out into her hand. The last way to charge the electroscope is extra interesting. What I can do is bring the rod nearby but not touch it. I'm inducing a charge separation, but I can still make it permanent. If I ground the electroscope, while there's a charged object nearby, the electrons don't go into the leaves, instead they go into the ground. Now I cut them off so that they can't go back by removing the ground, and when I remove the rod, you can see that this electroscope is in fact charged. Since I used a negative rod, I pushed electrons out of the electroscope, and now the electroscope is left with a positive charge. All right, girls, activity time. Are you ready? Yes! I said, are you ready? Yes! So what are we going to need for this activity? We're going to need some really thin string. Stuff for sewing works best. A pair of scissors to cut your string and a very small piece of aluminum foil. So we're going to cut the string. Now you're going to place the string right in the middle of your piece of aluminum foil and then bunch up the aluminum foil around the string into a little ball. Bunch it, bunch it, bunch it, bunch it, all the way, perfect ball, done. Nice work, you girls ready to go? Yes! All right, now take your uh, ball on the string and secure it somewhere. You can either tie it up to something or like you've seen we've done, we've just put a book on top of the string to hang it over our little bookshelf. Now Lizzie is gonna charge up her rod and she's gonna charge that aluminum ball by contact. That means charge it by touching the rod to the ball. Go ahead Lizzie, touch the ball with the rod. Okay, now when she brings the rod nearby, it repels. She's given some of that negative charge to the ball. Whoa. Hey, Lizzie, is that fun? Yes. Ouchie. So now <laughs> rub different objects together and play around. See if you can get your ball to respond. <laughs> the instructions for the assignment will be following this video, so check them out on our Google Classroom. Work hard and stay safe. Do you